morning. This is the president of the Small Ruminants Association of Jamaica. We are here this morning to have a look at um, the Duns family chicken farm and they also have a sheep operation here. They use the sheep to clean the property as we go along. So let us have a look at this operation. They're actually here building a goat pen. We can come and have a look at it. One of the things on um, Mr. Dunn's farm is that they have a problem with dogs. So he's using metal. He has a lot of scrap iron pipes and so forth. And he uses metal to, um, to build this little holding area for his sheep. The sheep are let out during the day and they are all over the farm and they just stay here and graze. You can have, come and have a look at his fence. He had about 70, 70 odd sheep recently and he had to put some concrete and mesh the, 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 the fence to the concrete because dog will come. He, he has put up an entire new fence here because the dogs would come and dig under the fence and come into the farm and he got I think 30 odd sheep were bitten up and about um, 12 of them died on the farm. His numbers are now very low. He doesn't have a lot now. Seems like about 20 or 30 sheep is left here on the farm. And um, you know, this is a big problem with dog predation on some of these farms. So the entire fence right around now is fortified to try and um, control the dog predation on, on the farm. Um, he has about, I think about four huge, chicken house which we can have a look at here now I'll we'll take a look and see inside um, you also have solar systems on the roof and you know quite a modern operation let's take a look inside one of these chicken house they are here the water tanks and storage water feeding bins so let us look a look in one of the feed homes did you show inside one of them him going carry around. All right. Can him go in? He's going to be in there. So we want Mr. Dunn. So you will find so himself. No, morning, no, Mr. Dunn. No, no, Mr. Dunn is staying good today. Mr. Mr. Dunn says he's not staying good today, but we still want to have a picture of Mr. Dunn. Okay. He's here managing the farm, you know. Yes. Because his wife is not here right now. Yes. All right. This is Mr. McCullough. Mr. McCullough. Yeah, he's the farm manager on the compound. All right. So let us go and look at the um, cooling pad. Cooling pad. So this is this is called a cooling pad. It's a wet, it's a wet system where water comes down on this pad. Am I correct? And then you have the fans that pull it, pull the air through the fan. This is what they use to keep the chicken house. So the water's coming down on this side. They use this to keep inside the um, the chicken house cool. One of the things is that um, I think we would want to see goat farmers having a building big like this with this kind of operation. Probably you can house maybe about four, five, ten thousand animals in a, in a facility like this. So they have their automatic feeders. That is why they have the bag feed. They put the not the bag feed, the pellet. They put the feed in this storage bin, and they automatically go inside and feed the um, the chickens inside the pen. This can also be adapted in goat farming if if, if we want, you know, especially put these kind of things in there and we can also put forages and so forth inside the, 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 the goat house but the pellet can be done like this um, so Mr. McCullough, how much chicken house is really here? This look, is it four. four? what size? This, these big ones, what size is this? 400 in length 400 feet in length 50. and 50 feet wide so we can take a look in this one? Yes. yeah, we'll take a look inside of this chicken pen chicken house. Um, I don't want to go in mine. We're not going to go inside. You can stay outside and look in, right? I'm going to want them in the water. Come, just step right over here, so let's go and see the chicken. That water has chemical in there. So, it's, so is it always dark like this? No, in the early stages. Oh. So the light gives them stress? Yeah. So you keep them in darkness all the time? So when these chicken are 
finished growing. They removed them for harvesting and then the chicken house now is empty. They let the sheep inside the chicken house and they go down the line and eat out all the waste feeding on the ground and they also eat the chicken later before they do the clean out of their house. Early. Um, these are some of the sheep on the farm here. Um, as you can see, they keep their place and eat out most of the bush and keep the place level and manage the, the property. Um, also, one of the things that is unique about sheep is that their ability to, to eat the chicken litter. When they open the when they take out the chickens and they open the door, they go inside there and eat any waste feed that is on the ground. And they also eat some of the chicken litter and they do very, very well on it. I mean, I've seen sheep eat this litter all day long and you know, they manage it so well. Sheep are very, very, very good with um, converting a lot of waste things to, to, to um, meat. And they do very well. Um, as you can see, Mr. Dunn's sheep are Black belly, he has a black belly ram, he has DARPA, he also has Katadin. He has a mixture of different um, genetics inside of this herd. Um, his herd was much, much larger than this, but um, they got destroyed by dogs, as we said before. Um, but the sheep are looking in very good condition. You can see the black belly, look at that black belly lamb over there. You can go and take a closer look at it. The, 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 ma the man is not, he won't just rush you. No. Look at this black belly. Nice. I love to see them colors. You see there? Nice. Nice black belly. Where me? See, look at it. That's the black belly. That's the color of the black belly. This is a crossbreed black belly. This is a what? A yo? Yes, a female. Very nice. And the ram. Ah, it was really. That's a Katadin looking sheep here. She's kind of looking old, but that is a Katadin type sheep. Yeah, that's how the Katadin looks. Very strong mothers. And parasite resistant. So now we are at the other side of the farm. Mr. Dunn's chicken farm. Sorry. You're a gun. Chicken farm. <laughs> no, hold on. No. Now we are on the other side of this Mr. Dunn's. This is, is Dunn's fish. fish farm. This is, this is the fish and the cattle farm. And goat. Here, and because goat and sheep. One of the things is that Mr. Dunn, when I just met him, he was a goat farmer. And now he's now, I think he does better with sheep. So let us have a look at his herd. So this is the fish. Now you notice that the rain, we had a lot of rain in recent times. Look at the birds. They usually go inside the pond and take out some of the fishes. Yes, yes they eat fish. So, oh, those are pigeons. So, the, play, the rain, the rain, the farm is very muddy because there was so much rain falling. Um, his goat houses, everything, you know, quite a bit of water was on it. And there is some of the sheep now on the farm over there. Sheep and goats. So what they do, most fish farms like this, as well as chicken farms. Most fish farms use sheep and goat to graze around the pond and keep them clean from shrubs and bushes. And you can see these sheep are doing a very good job at it. There's nothing, nothing here on the farm. Wow, look at that ram. My gosh, look at the black belly ram. Pretty. God, the tendon You see that? Fish, oh lord, the fish jump. Let's see the fish now. Boom. 
Um, so I'm here today, I'm cutting some of um, some mulberry limbs, I'm going to plant them. As you can see, this is the mulberry, very leafy, a big, very big leaves. The leaves have different sizes on them and so forth. One of the things with the mulberry is that when you confine the space around it, it goes straight up because it's always searching for the sun. And this mulberry here, when they plant it out in the fields and you're using it for um, forages they usually plant them maybe two feet apart and they go straight up like this and you can cut them and feed your animals so I'm cutting some limbs today I'm gonna plant so we'll have a look at this I'm gonna cut one of these mature limbs one big Now that I've cut these limbs, what you usually do is cut, is, is count like three nodes, one, two, three, and then you cut, one, two, three, and then you cut, one, two, three nodes, you cut three nodes, it can be more, but this is what is recommended, one, two, three, and you cut, and you usually take off the smaller limbs, and take off the leaves, and you cut one, two, three. And then when you cut them up like this, um, then you plant, you plant these sticks. Going to be looking at uh, my compost heap. So over that area, I have some goat manure and grass. And what I usually do, I take all the compost and all the waste that I have, and I spread them out and take the leaves and cover them and leave them there for a few weeks to months. And then I harvest the manure. This is the end result of my manure. This is what comes at the end of it. This I, I, I use that sieve, I have sticks, all kind of things in it, but this is what ends up happening here. I'm going to today use some of this manure mixed with dirt and I'm going to be um, cutting and planting some mulberry plants. I got some dry limbs here, well not dry limbs, I have some limbs here that I cut today. One of the things is that you should cut, cut it at three nodes, so you cut it you have one, two, three nodes and then you plant. It said usually you put one node inside the um, inside the pot. And usually you clip off all the leaves off it. So cut one, two, three, and then you cut. You do this and then you plant these sticks and water it. And usually within about two months, it's fully catched and grown. So I'm gonna be planting these today, you can have a look. Over here, I planted some Tricanteria. They have grown very lovely now. They are about maybe six weeks to two months old here now. And most of them get catch. These are more mature limbs that I had planted here and they catch very nicely. I think only two of them didn't catch. But everything is growing very nicely. So I'm gonna set some um, mulberry today so we can have a look. Um, also, I would like you to have a look at our 
earthworms or California worms. Well, I had them in this bath and now um, they have been taken up. I have some trees growing here. But as you see, this is the goat manure with grass and other shrubs inside here. And this is how it looks when it has been um, composted, when the worms have taken care of them. So I'm trying to see if I can find some of the worms here. Don't know if I will. So from um, also the manure from my quail cages, I have a, a plate under here. The manure drops through, drop, and then I clean it. And all of this go into the manure pile when I'm doing my um, composting. So I use the litter from the, the quail, from the goats, from the sheep, from the rabbit, from everything, and make my compost heap.